Larry King now, Orange is the New Black's Taryn Manning. I always say my, you know, I say my heyday was when I was like 24. I never really thought I could get better and that was the good years, the golden years. And, and I guess, yeah, like this is another phase of my career and it's very exciting. Orange is the New Black was a hit at the, from the get-go. Yeah. People started hugging me. <laughs> no, not to like get too like cerebral or, or spiritual on it, but I think sometimes it's like stars align for people. You get the right group of like spirits together, and, and off we go. Genji Cohan is is a, an amazing, just radical renegade in, in the best way. Plus, what do you think of our president? I don't. I don't know what to say. I mean, I don't want to get myself killed. All next on Larry King now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our guest today is actress and musician Taryn Manning. You've hated her and then loved her as Pensatucky on the Emmy-winning Orange is the New Black. The fifth season of this mega-hit for Netflix returns June 9th. Taryn is also known for her performances in 8 Mile, Hustle and Flow, and Crossroads. And she recently released a new song called Glitch Life. Your character really evolved from dislike to like, was, how unlikable was she? Pretty bad. She was pretty unlikable, Who yeah. was she playing? Who was she playing? Who was Pensatucky? Um, Who is Pensatucky? Who is she? I'm, well, you know, as, as we do as humans, she, she's a lot, you know, she's lost, evolving, and figuring out who she is, because I think that we're all kind of a work in progress in life, so I feel that, you know, where she started, coming in there, not a very educated, not raised properly, you know, as far as um, what I've been, you know, the backstories that, that the writers have written for me, that's helped really shape up how I play her. But she's come a long way, you know, she's, she's uh, learned a lot about forgiveness and sort of, um, you know, letting down any types of like, uh, she was very judgmental. Did you think when the character was written that they would have her change and evolve? Um, I, no, I wasn't sure. I pretty much, I read, I read it and I was like, all right, we're gonna just sign up to play this, you know, awful person for quite some time. <laughs> Did you like her more now? <laughs> um, I really like her. I like her both ways because it's acting and it's, it's really fun to exercise. Um, those types of uh, skills and stuff, and, and I, I find it enjoyable to get to go all over the place with her. Now, you've been acting for a long time. Yeah. Was it surprising to suddenly have this boom your career? Did yes. you think it would? Um, I really, like, I always say my, you know, I say my heyday was when I was, like, 24. I never really thought I could get better in the sense of, like, I don't know, I just felt like that was that, that was the good years, the golden years. And, and I guess, yeah, like this is another phase of, of, of my career and it's very exciting. But no, I didn't think it would do this. It's the most successful Netflix show ever, right? I think it is. I think so. I mean, I, I know that we do well, people like it. Did I don't you? know the numbers. Why is it doing so well? Um, I think, you know, not to like get too like cerebral or, or spiritual on it, but I think sometimes it's like stars align for people. You get the right group of like spirits together and, and off we go. That's one part of looking at it, you know, that's one way. Or if you want to go technical and, and, and scientific, obviously it's a testament to the writing. Genji Cohan is, is a, an amazing, just radical renegade in, in the best way, like very courageous and... Um, I love to, I just love what she stands for. She's very, like I said, she's very brave. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't know why a bunch of women, some boobs, um, prison, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> when you read the script the first time, mm -hmm. did you think it would be a hit? Yeah, yeah, did. yeah. I was... Why did you think it? Okay, I'm not sure, I, I never really gauged something like, is this gonna be a hit? Did I think that I would enjoy myself playing this and that this could be like an enjoyable show? Yes. A hit, I mean, that's kind of, you know, subjective, but I, I mean, I saw the makings of what could be a hit. It doesn't shy away from sensitive topics. No. Orange is the New Black, you've been, ra you, your character's raped. Um, 
Is it a challenge to play it? Yeah, it's a challenge. Hard? Um, um, sometimes it's hard, but it's not because of the role. It's other things. Uh, like? I have, feel a big responsibility now in the best way, because it's been very educational to just sort of, you know, do this whole thing right and correctly, like even in moments like this, because it is such a big topic and it's, it's scary a little bit. Really? Kind of. In the fifth season, does it get more political? It's always relevant. It remains relevant, you know. She, she, the way that the way that these writers can forecast, because you know they're they're writing and but they're kind of nailing it as as if they're writing in like current day. So. Do they give you any input? Can you say, uh, I'm not comfortable saying this, or that line is doesn't fit what I feel. Um, you can definitely talk through things, but um, with all due respect to the writers, you know that they've slaved over that in the best way. Like, they got there all together, and it's, it's not to me. It's not like 100% polite to go and change. I've been, actually been in trouble for doing that on yeah. another show. So, um, yeah. But there's input every now and again. I, you can hear a little something. That, that's gonna happen, but you don't get a lot. Does the cast get along? Mm -hmm. Yes, very much. Yeah? Yeah. It's fun being on a hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's cool, like it's fun to come back after a hiatus and hear about what, all the things everybody's been doing. The critical acclaim was immediate, right? I mean, Orange is the New Black was a hit at the, from the get-go. Yeah, it was. People started hugging me. <laughs> our guest is Taryn Manning. We're discussing her diverse career and her new music after the break. Stay with us. Our guest is Taryn Manning. Orange is the New Black has already been renewed through its seventh season. Are you in it for another two years, two seasons? Um, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, what do you mean? Yeah, no, we're, I know. I don't know. I mean, well, they renewed the show. Yeah, they did. You are not renewed. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like maybe, maybe not, but that's sort of the mystery. That I'm not allowed to tell. I've been programmed. Oh, I see. <laughs> you mean they might kill you off? I don't know. I'm not you sure. can't say. <laughs> you got a lot of critical acclaim in the mid 2000s for performances in Eight Mile. It was a hell of a movie. And Hustle and Flow. Are those the roles you're particularly proud of? Yeah, there's a, there's a, those are two um, very uh, special projects to me. A lot of people thought that like I went away, not that everybody knew me and I vanished off the face of the earth or something, but I've always worked and I'm proud of a lot of like you know independent films too that that never really did I guess what you know what we had hoped or whatever that means, but I still enjoyed the process. And Where are you from? I was born in Virginia. Where? Uh, Fairfax. Fairfax. Oh, well, I lived in McLean. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. 20 but, years in McLean. Great. Yeah. You, did you ever go through a rough patch in your career? Or have you always been working? <laughs> what, what, what is a, what's a rough patch? A rough patch is when you're not working. So just based on what? Money? Did, did you ever go through long periods of time of difficult... It's a tough profession, acting, and it isn't always up. Right? Yeah, it ebbs and flows. Have you had times where it wasn't up? I have. I, yeah, I was. Yeah, I've had times where you know I'm not getting roles and stuff, and but I've never really, I've ever, you know, bought into that. It's like done or doomed. It's just I understand there's mountains and valleys. So you never said to yourself, "I'm going to quit this." Um, I've said that. N never the words quit, but I've said that I don't fully feel like I'm walking in my complete destiny, that there's something else out there that I'm meant to be doing. And um, that's the, the thing in life that baffles me a little, the most, I think. Crossroads was good for you, though, wasn't it? Oh, the Crossroads was a great time. That Britney was Spears, you like working with her? I like Britney, she's awesome. Uh, you mentioned a couple of years ago that you'd love to have Britney on Orange is the New Black. Have you made any progress? <laughs> I, not that I know of. I think I just sort of, I just think she'd be amazing on there. Was you, were you first a musician? Yes. You a singer? And a musician, 
Different. Guitar? Mm-hmm, the guitar. How did the switch come into acting? Um, it wasn't so much a switch. I, I grew up doing ballet. Um, I was a ballerina first. I was a dancer. And I went to Orange County High School of the Arts, which is like m for the dance program. That was my main focus, like when I moved to Hollywood to dance. And, um, but all the while I was taking acting courses and everything, and basically I just, um, what happened was I got a role to play a dancer, and, and I was hired and rehe rehearsing, and then they fired me. Like, Why? Because <laughs> they got more money in the budget, and they wanted a bigger star. And at that time I was like 19, and I was devastated, you know? I mean, you would have thought there was like flowers all over my house, I mean, because there was no reason for it. Like, I mean, there wasn't anything I did wrong. They just wanted someone bigger. That's when I learned about, like, the politics, um, sort of about all, like, crunching numbers, if you will. And that's when I was like, oh, yeah, well, I can play guitar and I can write. So that sort of, like, made, that really boosted the, the singing stuff. Stop dancing? I can still dance, but, yeah, not like I could. Who got the part? Really? You want to go there? Yeah. It's not because it's not personal, though, okay? Oh, I understand. At the time, there was a show called Roswell that was a very, it was a big show. And um, Sheree App I was replaced by Sheree Appleby, who's a lovely person. And we've spoke many times. First, I'd throw her a side eye, like, hmm. <laughs> but then I realized, you know, it wasn't her, so. Tell me about Glitch Life. Um, Glitch Life is, uh, is the, you know, leading track off my EP, and, um, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a body of work that's been a long time coming, and that particular term and word is just sort of how I feel about, like, technology meeting, you know, real life, like how you just had a flip phone, and you're like, I don't text, and it's just, it's hard to keep up with, with, you know, technology, it's, like, ever-changing, and, if you don't stay up, you know, in our sort of line of business, if you don't have so many followers or this or that, you can, like, lose roles over, you know, not enough likes on Facebook or just stuff that's asinine to me, to be honest. You write your own stuff? Yeah, I write my own stuff. I have some co-writers, but mostly. Do you like singing as much as acting and dancing? Um, I like writing music a lot. I, I don't call myself, like, a, an incredible vocalist. I just write my, my stuff, and I do love it, but, I, but they both serve different purposes for me. You were out of the studio for some time then. Um, no, you never stopped singing. I just, um, I got a little let down with, with the, the business as far as like, I was assigned to a major label and then that, you know, stuff like that happened in a band with my brother. And you know, you sometimes just get a little bit let down and you kind of have to recalibrate. But this could be a big hit, could lead to a full album? It is a full album. Oh, it is? I have, like, yeah, I have a lot. I have a lot of songs that's just about, like, cherry-picking the right ones. Is it out now? The single is, yes. The single's out. The album will be coming. Yes. Up next, we're talking politics and Taryn's bucket list. More after the break. We're back with Taryn Manning, the multi-talented actress, songwriter, singer, dancer. What else do you do? <laughs> Taryn Manning does a lot of things. I annoy people. You're an advocate <laughs> for music education in schools. Is that leaving with all these budget cuts? I feel like, I, yeah, I feel like uh, people don't understand. I, I, I truly feel like music's a big healer, and that's universal language. It, like, brings people together, and it's a shame that you would cut that. It's a good creative outlet. What do you think of our president? I just, uh, man, it's, it's such a hard one. It's like, you know, he's there and he's there. So it's like you kind of have to just, you kind of have to just wish for the best and, and, and send good positive energy because I, I don't really know at this point what to say about it. I'm definitely shocked by um, some of the, the positions that he takes. But I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, I don't want to get myself killed. <laughs> <laughs> It's come to that. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> okay, we play a little game of If You Only Knew, Taryn. I just throw some questions at you. Okay. Who was your childhood celebrity crush? Oh, my goodness. Um, childhood. Um, probably, like, uh, uh, Corey, Corey Haim. Secret talent. That I can do a handstand for, like, a minute or Really? Two. Mm -hmm. Biggest risk you've ever taken? And, uh, probably just um, 
Maybe jumping into this crazy line of work. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty pleasure. I like a, I like salt. Salt. I like sea salt. Oddest it. fan encounter. There's this one. There's this one gentleman that um, I like unicorns. Okay, I've liked them for a long time. They're a beautiful thing to me. But I showed up to a big ginormous package at my front door of my home. I was with my mother, and it was huge. And we were both like, what's in, you know, we were a little freaked out to open it. And, and it was mm -hmm. basically like, all right, one, two, three. And we popped open, it was like a life-size. Unicorn. Huge unicorn. And then right away, it's like, he hit me on Facebook, like, so what'd you think? I'm like, <laughs> <"Oops."> <laughs> <laughs> It was a little odd, it was a little odd, you know, especially you at my You ever him? No, I've never met him. Yeah. No, he did come to a show. Yep, he came to a Is concert. he normal? He was sweet. <laughs> Uh, something on your professional bucket list. Um, I would like to. I would like to do. Well, I'm, I, I've been directing, um, I, and I've been writing. You know, some some comedy material that I can't wait for people to experience, because I've I've gotten sort of typecast as very uh, troubled and just playing these just it's down. Terrible. Yeah, just you know, and it's like I'm actually kind of a goofball in real life, and it's sometimes can be frustrating, but. Directing and producing, and then just also like, just just uh, some humanitarian work and in, in helping people uh, believe that dreams can come true. Because I'm not a dream crusher. I believe that you can come from like anywhere, and you know if you hone your craft and sharpen your tool, that you too can have what we have. What's on your personal bucket list? My personal bucket list. Um, probably to make amends with my my family, my mother. Person you trade places with for a day. Mm, that's a good one. For a day. Hmm. Maybe like Meryl Streep. Something you wish you were better at. I wish I was better at, uh, I guess, writing. Strangest job you've ever had. Probably Marisa's Burrito Adventure. You what? <laughs> it was called Marisa's Burrito Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> What's the biggest perk of being a celebrity? Now uh, the biggest perk um, of being a celebrity, a celebrity, mm. an actor or a yeah. Well, people know you now. They know you. Right. They see the show. You get like like people actually listen. They don't just go like, oh, who's this little, you know, blonde short girl? It's like I don't know. People actually listen now to what I have to say. They pay attention to you. I guess yeah. That's <laughs> the point. Uh, what superpower would you like to have? Um, just to uh, read people's minds. <laughs> if you weren't an actor and a musician, what, what do you think you'd do? I think that I would be into holistic healing, like acupuncture and like energy healing, and probably go to a mountain and meditate in silence and be a monk. Tell me something we don't know about you. I don't know, like a <laughs> lot, but um, no, like no skeletons in my closet, but... Um, no skeletons. Are you married? No. Ever been close? Mm -hmm. I was engaged. Wow. Have you? <laughs> oh, yeah, good question. Do you want to be married? Mm hmm Want to have children? I would, yeah. But I'm getting older, so I don't, I don't know if that's possible, but I am open to adopt. Oh, Taryn is answering your social media questions in our uh, final segment. The fifth season of Orange is the New Black premieres June 9th on Netflix. We'll be right back. We're back with Taryn Manning. Taryn Manning's uh, Orange is the New Black's ninth season, tenth season, fifth season. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I'm rolling around in my head. That's it how is, many wives you've had. I'm June. joking with you. Okay, Taryn. <laughs> joking with you, Want to get on the list, Taryn? Yeah, hey, why not? Why not? <laughs> okay. Some social media questions. Jason Wagner tweets, <clears throat> where did you find your research or inspiration for Pensatucky? on Orange is the New Black. Where did I find my research? Um, basically, I did a lot of um, a lot of YouTube searching. I read a lot about the ju judicial system. I learned a lot about meth and sort of the, the beautiful ingredients that, you know, <laughs> meth consists of. And at that point, I realized just sort of how, you know, someone's brain could just be ruined by that and just shaped her with all these different things in mind. How'd she get her name? Um, it's, she has many names, you know. She's 
she got, it's, it's sort of like where she's from, and then, you know, she's got her real name and all different just nicknames. She's from Pennsylvania and Kentucky. I think she's actually also from Virginia, too. Another from Jason Wagner. How many takes did the skateboard bashing scene require on Sons of Anarchy? Um, it was a styrofoam skateboard, and it took two takes because they only had two. So you kind of have to nail it. <laughs> <laughs> did you enjoy that? I really, I really enjoy working with Katie Seagal. Jade Watson on our blog asks, what is it like to work with Terrence Howard? Uh, probably one of the most um, incredibly educational uh, situations of my life. I really, he's very, very intelligent. It's hard to keep up with him, but he's a very good acting partner. Did he make you better? I believe that he elevated me for sure. Was there a moment when you knew, Taryn, that you'd made it? Oh, man, that's such... Uh... I, I still feel like it's like, you know, it's it's like a, a marathon, not a sprint. I think when I'm married with a child or when I, I don't know, it's, I don't know what's, what that means, but I know that um, I get roles and offers and sometimes I don't and I really want to roll and it's always a struggle, you know, really, but it's a beautiful struggle. What was your first paid acting job? The practice. I always liked that show. Yeah, and working with Dylan McDermott and Lara Flynn Boyle, that was pretty cool to start off with. Uh, okay, what do you want from the next chapter in your career? Oh, wow, so, so I've been asked this a lot recently, and like I have to say that I used to be really big on goals and timelines and this and that, but I really have to say that because of some of the circumstances in my life that I live every day, day to day, and I, and I just try to, obviously continue to be the best I can be at my craft, but I don't have any goals or, I mean, it's it's really good right now, so. Just, well, yeah, you're on a hit show. Yeah, and it's gonna come to an end and everything, because all beautiful things do, they say, but I believe that there's uh, a lot more uh, interesting stuff for me to do. You like living out here? I like living in Los Angeles, yes. New York's a little more tough for me. How are they gonna promote the tune? Yeah, we're promoting the tune. That's very good because Thank that's you. a hit and the album clicks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's one of those things like I'm an actor trying to sing now, but you know, you just have to get past that stigma. But I love my, I love music. So if, if people really knew how genuine, authentic it is for me, I, you know, maybe they would listen more. Thank you, Taryn. You're welcome. Thank Best you. Best of luck. <laughs> Thanks to my guest, Taryn Manning. The fifth season of Orange is the New Black premieres June 9th. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at Kings Things. I'll see you next time.